Hello, it's Daniel here. We all know that money doesn't bring us happiness. At least that's what we tell ourselves. But money is a very useful context for teaching numeracy and literacy and digital skills come to that. If you think about something like the decimal point, then money is great. In a simplistic sense, the decimal point is what separates the euro from the cents. Money is a, a useful starting point and a useful context for applying newly learned skills. In itself, the use of money involves an important set of capabilities. And it's not just about using money to pay for things, checking our change. There's a whole lot of learning to be done. When we teach financial literacy and numeracy, we often hear people talking about the five Bs, budgeting, bills, banking, borrowing, and benefits. There's obviously a lot more going on here than just teaching basic numeracy in a context. We all need to understand how to use money daily, but also how to plan for the future, how to use credit, sometimes referred to as good debt, how financial products and services work, and what to do when we find ourselves in difficulties. There are several really excellent resources out there online for teaching coin and note recognition and how to use an ATM, how to check your change, how to read bank statements, what some of the terms mean, like credit and debit. Many of the banks have educational resources on their websites or on websites that they funded, such as the ones I'm showing you now. Similarly, energy companies will often have resources to help people understand kilowatt hours and units of energy that they're paying for. Consumer agencies and debt advice services will often also provide resources and information and guidance. These agencies and your local credit union might also offer a face-to-face -face information session for your learners if you get in touch with them. There are some websites on the screen right now. A question that I've been asked by numeracy teachers in the past is, is this really our job? Don't we risk becoming financial advisors? And I can understand why people might be nervous about that and think that they're straying out of the territory that they're really qualified for. But my advice would be to think about health literacy. As tutors, we might often need to help learners to understand the language and numbers involved in managing their health. This might be to do with understanding instructions on medicines, or it might be to do with understanding cholesterol or blood pressure or grams of salt or sugar in our diets. But we wouldn't stray into giving advice about how someone actually manages their health. At that point, we'd tell someone to speak to their pharmacist or their doctor, and it's the same with money. We can teach people about money, how it works in society, but we don't want to tell people what to do with their money and what not to do. We're not there even as a sounding board to help people make those kinds of very personal, important decisions. That's why, in the same way we should know about the health specialists and resources in our community, we should know about the money supports that are available. Again, make friends with the local MABS service and with the local credit union. As well, there's the question of sensitivity around money. This is someone's personal information. So if you're teaching budgeting, how do you do it? Well, using case studies is one way. Whether these are case studies you make up yourself or are downloaded from the internet, you can always ask your learners to create scenarios for themselves and use these as the starting points. 